it's a great project for a lot of reasons. That we're going to offset 166 uh, metric tons of carbon dioxide a year through this effort, and uh, it's a it, it's, it's just a, a fantastic project all the way around. Hi, my name's Kristen, um, and I'm a freshman rep for Canada this year. When I found out over the summer that I was going to be living in Canada this year, um, I started to do a little bit of research online about where I was staying and found out that there were solar panels, um, which I was really excited about. Looking at Canada, uh, it was interesting because it's predominantly south-facing and it has standing metal seam roofs, or lead coated copper, that are at uh, somewhere between a 30 and 40 degree angle. So as we began to evaluate it, it became clear that it was very conducive to solar technology. What was exciting about Canada is not only is it one of the few buildings in Harvard Yard that we probably could do this on because it's not historic in nature, um, it also houses the domestic water plant for the generation of hot water for all of Harvard Yard. We also noticed that the Canada Hall, because of its location, is adjacent to the campus steam tunnel. We thought about taking waste heat from that process, combining it with the solar technology to come up with what we call uh, hybrid uh, heat recovery and solar solution for Kennedy Hall. It was a prime opportunity. So we began to look at the solar capacity of, uh, of the building and uh, we've currently ended up with a design that uh, the candidate has 150 4x8 foot solar panels. Very sizable array. They think it's the third largest solar project, solar thermal project in the, in the state of Massachusetts. The cupola is where all the steam tunnel heat gets exhausted. And it's about 105 degrees at any given time at a minimum. So what we did was replace the fan with a new fan that has a heat recovery coil, several coils deep. It draws the heat and the BTUs out of it and then ejects it to the atmosphere. So this, there's a boiler plant, gas-fired boiler plant, in the basement that uh, has a series of boilers that will take the temperature of the water from whatever it happens to be in the loop, uh, whether it be from the city makeup or just the residual loop, up to 130 degrees to distribute around the, uh, the, the yard. Uh, basically what happens with these 150 panels is there's, there's 10 arrays of 15 panels each that uh, are piped together horizontally it into to, uh, three vertical runs. Those runs, that pipe is filled with a glycol solution. So that comes down to, through these risers, uh, a, a room that's dedicated to this uh, thermal array. So this is where all the piping comes from the solar array and the heat recovery system. Drawing heat from the sun, pumping it back down to these heat exchangers down here, what we're looking at now is the control panel. All of these systems uh, work in tandem to produce uh, data that's being viewed from a, a web page that allows us to see all the system operation dynamically. So this big pipe that comes in, incoming city water, is actually being preheated by this big heat exchanger, a thousand gallon tank. So it's a double heat exchange that takes the BTUs from the solar array, from the heat recovery system, exchanges that heat with the makeup water and uh, brings it up to temperature. The solar thermal system can generate a tremendous amount of heat. So instead of uh, water entering, makeup water entering the boilers at let's say anywhere from 40 to 60 degrees, it's entering the boilers at 110 degrees. So all the boilers have to do is bring it up to temperature to 130 degrees by polishing off the temperature differential. So it's still using the boilers. It's just reducing how much they need to operate to get the temperature up to 130 degrees. In, in, in a very basic way, that's, that's how the system operates. Then when I came to campus and started going to like different events, um, and upper class would ask me where I was staying, and when I'd say Canada, they'd always um, be like, oh, that's great, you're staying in the green dorm. We can displace 60% of the carbon-based fuel to generate domestic water for uh, Harvard Yard. Uh, through this hybrid solution of solar thermal and heat, steam, steam tunnel heat recovery. Of the 60% of the that we're generating uh, from that process, 40% is from solar technology, 60% is from heat recovery systems. It's uh, something that's visible only to those in the Harvard community, 
and even then is somewhat obscured by uh, Memorial Church. So only portions of it can be seen from Harvard Yard. So it's a good teaching tool. Uh, we want it to be visible, but at the same time we don't want it to be so obvious that it's distracting and it meets that criteria as well. Not only is it a good solar project, a good renewable energy project, but it's a great energy conservation project too. So it's really exciting when I'm walking back and I can see the solar panels and know that that's where my hot water is coming from. It's really cool.